for literally the past 30 years, Congress has chosen not to fix Social Security. And by pushing the problem off, it becomes a more difficult problem for all of us to solve. We do intend to have the rollout of the bill and introduce it uh, late September or early October. Social Security's trust fund is projected to become insolvent one year earlier than it was in last year's report. We know that Congress has to either raise taxes or cut benefits to make Social Security solvent. We could also increase the cap, the maximum wage on which uh, payroll taxes are levied. We can reduce the initial benefits that the retirees get when they first claim benefits. We could increase the retirement age, which is another way of reducing benefits. The most popular plan is from Congressman John Larson of Connecticut. That's a Social Security expansion plan that actually increases benefits across the board for rich retirees and for poor retirees. And it funds this by increasing taxes. It will enhance benefits for the first time in more than 50 years. And this is uh, President Biden's uh, strong suggestion that we lift the cap on recipients who are currently not paying on their full uh, salary. When the Social Security Trust Fund runs out, benefits must be cut by around 22%. They'd be cut for current retirees, they'd be cut for future retirees, for retirees of all income levels. They'd be cut for people receiving disability benefits as well, people receiving survivor's benefits. Demographics are the real driving force behind Social Security's funding shortfall. And we have more retirees with the baby boomers retiring at a rate of 10,000 per day. Life expectancies have increased, but low birth rates means there's fewer workers in the workforce paying into Social Security. The COVID pandemic had a number of effects on Social Security. Unfortunately, a certain number of retirees have died. That does reduce costs a little bit for the program, but COVID also had an effect on the economy, which meant fewer taxes being paid into the system. Many progressives honestly don't trust uh, private markets to provide retirement security for people. And so for progressives, a, a, a strong government role seems to make sense. On the other hand, for Republicans, they often distrust a government role. They think that individuals can make better choices on their own. Both sides have, have points. You know, individuals do make mistakes in, in saving for retirement, but on the whole, retirement savings are much higher today than they were in the past. The opponents profess to love Social Security, and they profess to love what it will do, but what they don't like to do is actually pay for it. The chances that the Congress is gonna allow Social Security to cut benefits in a precipitous way are very, very small. The reality though is this long-term program is being managed by politicians who have very, very short time horizons. They're thinking about their poll ratings today. They're thinking about the next congressional election, which is at most two years away. They're not thinking about how do we make this system solvent for 75 years. So I think it is likely this will get left to the last minute before a, a, a solution has come up with. And to be honest, for Democrats in Congress, there are strong incentives to delay reform. We know that reforming early uh, makes the, the problem easier to solve. But the longer we delay uh, reform, the more retirees we have collecting benefits, the, the, the stronger the political force against any sort of benefit cut. I won't be shocked at all if this uh, becomes a 2033 solution to a 2033 insolvency.